Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Brian and Jack with Superman's Comics. We like to end the week with the last call, but we like to begin the comic book week with our hunt list, our top 10 comic book back issues for you to be on the lookout for, right? That's right. A lot of great books this week, uh, keeping with some similar themes that we've talked about the last several weeks. And again, like Brian said, this is the hunt list. This is not reactive. This isn't about what's already hot. We're looking ahead to the future. So we're going to get into it right now, starting with number 10. Kicking off this week, this is a book that was really popular a few years ago. We still think it's one to add to your collection. And we're talking about four kids walk into a bank, number one, from Black Mass Comics. Yeah, this was the book that introduced me not only to Matt. Matthew Rosenberg, who's of course a major writer now for Marvel, um, but also introduced me to an artist I really enjoyed, Tyler Boss, uh, who teamed up for this book. Uh, it, this is a series I really like. It was the first series I ever read uh, from the independent publisher Black Mask, who um, we're going to highlight a couple of their books. They were on a roll. I mean, they were one of the hottest indie publishers. Um, I want to say it was like 2013 or 2014. But like a lot of indie publishers, uh, they were not able to stay with that consistency and kind of fell back. Having said that, they had a few amazing properties. Four Kids Walk Into a Bank is one, and now it's been optioned for film. It looks like it's moving forward. Um, and I definitely think it's one of those properties, as soon as you read the book, you immediately felt like, man, this is made for TV or a movie. And it, it kind of has that. I hate, it's one of these like cliche things we say at this point, but that, that Stranger Things vibe where you get, you know, a young cast, which seems to be what Hollywood really, really wants, young ensemble casts. Yeah. You say Stranger Things. I'm going to say like Stand By Me or The Goonies because <laughs> I live in the 80s, bro. There you go. Coming at the nine spot this week, we're sticking with Black Mask and we got Black number one. Yeah, this one from Kahari Randolph is, again, one of my favorite indie titles from this era. Um, and it's a title that uh, it, it seems like it was ahead of its time if you look at what's going on in the country right now. But really, it was, it was for the times. Uh, and we've definitely been a bit stagnant on these issues. But it's one of those things that it, it, because right now uh, so much is going on, you expect to see these stories that put uh, – People of color, specifically na the entire neighborhood, um, kind of in a spotlight. Uh, Black is an amazing superhero story uh, told through uh, you know, the African-American perspective. And uh, I don't want to give too many details about the story away, but it's definitely one you should check out uh, and grab and trade if you haven't. But it's one that now has been optioned by uh, Warner Brothers. Uh, that's a big option. That's not like, you know, you, you see a lot of, a lot of times you see these production companies option. Um, things and pr a production company still has to get that made from the studio. Uh, Warner Media picking up an option. Uh, they certainly have avenues from HBO Max uh, to, to like HBO Max and and a number of other outlets and streaming services to which they can go ahead and, and kind of self sufficiently put this out. So this is one I'm definitely bullish on. If you can find uh, copies of the number one issues or the variants, that definitely grab. Yeah, a lot of these streaming platforms definitely gave wide mobility for a lot of these. Because back in the day, if it was just regular cable TV, people wouldn't give a shit. But now that you got all these big right. streaming platforms, everyone's competing to get that great content. And comic books is a perfect place for it. Hitting the list at the eighth spot this week, we get that Fantastic Four number two from 2018. Yeah, this is from the most current run that's going on right now. Um, and this is a bit of a, uh, a, a Brian Wood lottery pick. Um, this is based on the fact that we already kind of have hints going on in the MCU as well as rumors going that when the Fantastic Four are introduced that we're going to get Franklin Richards almost immediately. That the Fantastic Four that we get will be um, maybe a little older and uh, already have children. And on top of Franklin, of course, he has a sister as well. And in this issue, in the most recent run, uh, Franklin's had a number of adult code names. Uh, and it seems like if you go look up first appearances uh, of Franklin Richards, you're going to get a number of different appearances um, of, of Franklin as this character or that character or that character. Well, his most recent was in this issue. Uh, and both he and his sister got new adult code names. And I really believe that why would they do that? 
kind of in the current publishing, the most recent publishing, um, and then veer in a different direction on television uh, or in the films uh, coming up. Now, I know that Marvel TV and publishing can be disjointed. They're not always in communication, oftentimes not in communication. Uh, but this seems like something where, again, it's a cover price book. Uh, so it's one that I'm paying attention to because if I can pick it up for cover price, since we already have strong uh, Inklings Franklin is on the way and people are already putting money into it. And then people are taking that next step and already picking up those other first appearances of, of uh, his adult kind of self. I think this is the one to kind of be on the lookout for being the most recent, the most modern and a two for one because you get him and his sister in this issue. Moving along the list into that number seven spot, we get another two for here. We have Young Avengers number one and number five well this is kind of similar to the last one we're, we're talking about franklin richards because we're talking about future phases of the mcu now it's no secret brian and i like to to, to keep an eye towards the future really play game, the game long term uh that's the way you're going to save the most money uh putting books into your collection is not to be so reactive in reacting off fomo and uh, we already know um that the young avengers is coming like right it, it, Kate, we've got Kate Bishop, um, we've got Cassie Lang, and now we've got uh, Krang the Conqueror on the way, or Kang, Krang, uh, let's see, I'm such a Ninja Turtle fan, I gotta, I gotta get used to saying Kang the Conqueror on the way, and because of that, of course, Kang, uh, he has a future self uh, as Iron Lad, who, uh, you know, is with the Young Avengers, and he Kang is a big part of the Young Avengers storyline. So everybody's going to be bullish about Young Avengers. But the first appearance of Young Avengers, and rightfully so, has been one of the hottest books on the, on the secondary market. But there's been a lot of talk about characters like uh, America Chavez and some of the more modern uh, members of the Young Avengers and being a part of the MCU's version. And that team didn't get formed until this 2013 volume two, uh, uh, Young Avengers number one, where it was kind of unofficial, like that the team's put together in the book, but they, have, they aren't named, it's not officially a team. And it isn't until issue number five that it becomes official. Now I think issue number one is the book to get if you were asking me my personal opinion. But the reason why we've got two books here is again, this is just a Simpleman's Comics policy. We don't play comics politics. We're not going to get involved in the debate over first full or named or unnamed or anything like this. We always say, since they're both cover price books at this point, grab them both, lot them up if you're looking to sell uh, in the future. But they, these are ones you can grab now for cover price and put in your collection before they become books that everybody's chasing. Yeah. A lot of people are hyped on America Chavez. I'm not too hyped on that. My, you know my favorite Chavez? Who's Young that? Guns. Yeah. <laughs> You're in the spirit world, asshole. <laughs> Coming in midway on the list, we get Children's Crusade, number nine. Now, this book was already red hot due to uh, some political scandal um, in South America when the book was pulled off the shelves due to the events of this issue. Now, again, this was the graphic novel that was pulled off the shelves. But in this issue, we get the, the first kiss between Wiccan and Hulkling, who are two predominant members of the Young Avengers, who we were just talking about. That the fact that the Young Avengers are coming, um, these are two characters who are definitely set up to be on the way. We know Wiccan for sure is coming because we've already seen promo shots from WandaVision, which depict him as a baby. So we know he's coming at some point. And, and again, because WandaVision is everything's going to be playing with time travel and things like that. Um, you can't rule out adult appearances and things like that. And this, we've talked about the fact that like the marriage that happened in Empire, um, as well as the North Star marriage that these LGBTQ plus uh, stories are going to be ones that the MCU is definitely uh, going to want to tell. And Children's Crusade number nine is a book that, as I said, was once red hot, which proves that the market can get on board with it. Uh, and it has been kind of like cooling and not kind of in the spotlight now is the time uh to go grab it it's definitely not a dollar bin book but it is a book you may find in back issue bins and it is a book you can find on ebay for far cheaper than it was selling for so now is a great time in a soft market to be picking this coming in at that number five spot here's a book you may have heard us talk about on this channel before but we're talking about canto 
We're talking about this in Cinevance for Volume 1, Issues 2 through 6. Yeah, this list is built on books that are being overlooked by others. Uh, again, if, if, you're, if you're new to the show and you're like, this doesn't seem like the hottest books of the week, yeah, it's not. Um, the, and that's the point. So we are bullish on Canto. And we know from the posts that we get tagged on all over Instagram and uh, Facebook and Twitter that a lot of you out there are also very bullish on, on Canto. There's a lot of Canto reader fans. There's a lot of Canto investors out there who believe in the, the inside joke between the Simpleman's comics family and the creators of Canto. Seven That's seasons? In a movie? Right. There's, but there's those of us, and including us, you and I, who truly believe in that. It's more than just a joke. And because of that, um, we've seen the, the value of issue number one, of the incentive of the San Diego Comic-Con. We've seen, uh, we've talked Cal, uh, Canto Volume 2, the Hallow Man number one, and the first appearances that are being totally overlooked. Um, and we've talked about the one shot, which was underprinted. Um, and the fact that it's it's going to be a winner long term, but the thing that gets overlooked is these one in ten incentives, two through six, which are when you look at the printing of volume two, it's it's definitely up since volume one because there's more fans on board. If that continues to grow, I can't give things away, but I will tell you there's more Canto coming, and if that continues to grow as this this property progresses, it's going to be one of those things where. We may look back on these early uh, first six IDW issues um, and, and some of those uh, later issues where people kind of jumped off of Canto when it stopped being this like immediate secondary market success around issues, say, like four, five, and six. You may start to look at some of those incentives um, and they, they are going to dry up on the market because people are Canto completionists. They are grabbing these up and putting them together in sets. Um, so this is something I would be on the lookout for. I think this is going to be a major property. Now, if you're not bullish on Canto, then this just isn't for you. But if you've already taken the journey with us on everything else Canto, then I'm, I'm looking at values right now thinking that these 10 to $12 books just, just are massively underpriced. Coming in the number four spot, we got another group of comic books, and we're talking about the spotter map, <laughs> those modern spawn issues from issue 280 on, right? Up to that road to 300 and beyond. Yeah, and uh, everything up to kind of like this current point, because we've seen that they've been red hot uh, in the last few issues. But the point that I'm making about this is we've seen what happened with spawn um, in the kind of like 170s, 180s area, right? Those issues got red hot in the secondary market. And we kept hearing, well, it's because those were the lowest printed issues. And that's true. Um, that was the dead point of Spawn. But now what we're seeing is issues 240s, 250s, 260s are really starting to pick up on the secondary market. Um, and these were still maybe not ordered as heavily as the ones that we're highlighting here, but they were certainly more than the, their predecessors. And I think it's really indicative of what Brian and I have been talking about uh, throughout our time together on this channel, which is the fact that Spawn is a, while it's a single character, the Spawn universe is collected heavily um, by diehard fans who have been there for 20 plus years. Yeah, it's like heavy metal or, um, sorry. Yes. It's like Lady Death, but on a, on like a higher scale. Yeah, and it, it's one of those things that people forget that the, the original Spawn was selling like a million copies. So even if there's 50 or 60,000 diehard fans now, that's still enough for these, this book to sell out week in and week out. Um, Todd McFarlane keeps that two ninety nine dollars cover price. Um, you know, he doesn't play games with exclusive variants or anything like that. Um, he works very hard to bring in big name artists. He works to develop cover designs like you've seen with 310 and 311. Um, that have been popular on the secondary market. So what we're trying to do is look ahead, right? And if you look at issues 280s in the 290s specifically, um, you're going to see a lot of issues that don't sell for anything more than cover. You're going to see some of those early Matina issues that were kind of over speculated on. And because of that, those short-term speculators, they were ready to dump those, right? They grabbed those because 283 hit $20. So they assumed, uh, you know, 
284, 285, all the rest would do the same. It didn't happen that way. They were jumping up off those issues. Now is the time to grab any of those spawn cover price issues. If you can grab these th issues from your LCS for 299 or even up to like four to five dollars, um, time has proven that those books just dry up. They do not sit in back issue bins. Uh, people put these in their collection, they disappear, especially those cover Bs, cover Cs, those black and white covers, uh, anything that's tough to find. I'd be looking for that. So this that's this is just giving you again a glimpse of what's on our buy list. This is what I am paying attention to right now. We are now moving into the top three. And coming in at number three, we get that 2000 AD number 149. This, of course, is a British comic book release, but we are talking about the first appearance of Judge Death. And if you're not familiar with Judge Death, Judge Death is the coolest villain and the coolest character in the Judge Dredd universe. Um, and although he was created some like 30 plus years ago, he's never been depicted in a feature film, although we have gotten two different Judge Dredd movies. Now, apparently the sequel or spinoff movie to the Carl Urban Judge Dredd movie was supposed to be a Judge Death movie. But it, it's a little bit like Lord Draken for me with the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, where it's like, how can we judge any Judge Dredd movie if he hasn't had to go up against just the coolest villain he could have to fight? Uh, um, until we get a Dredd versus Death movie, uh, we can never truly judge the success of Judge Dredd. And I do think the fact that there have been two movies that while they may not have been commercially successful, I think the first one was, I don't think the second one was, but I think the second one was more. Second one was bad, way better. Right, right. Cult popular. It was like, it was more widely. It was um, like, it was like when John Wick uh, first came out and you're like, oh, but then when you saw it, you're like, man, this movie's awesome. They just didn't make more of them like they did John Wick. Right. Like, well, yeah, it just, it just was one of those things that the first one didn't make money for the studio. The studio didn't want to move forward on the sequel. Um, but it, it gives me hope with this property. I think this property will see life again. There will be another Judge Dredd movie. Um, and I just feel like if anyone's going to do a Judge Dredd movie and do it right, they've got to do it with Judge, uh, with, with Judge Death, who, by the way, in my opinion, was absolutely ripped off to create the Batman who laughs. If you're not familiar with this character, go look at this character and then go look at the Batman who laughs and tell me they did not steal the character design or at least be massively inspired by judge death. Yeah. It wasn't stolen. It was, it was Matina. Right. However you want to call it. Um, but, but again, because of that, um, I think that they've got to beat Warner brothers to the punch and get judge De uh, death out there before the Batman who laughs ever hits any sort of people are going to be like man they copied batman who laughs right 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 which is not the case at all um so there's also a great origin issue for for judge uh death in the next issue um there's also an amazing like brian bowling cover um that's a couple issues later that's incredible so there's some other issues to pay attention to if you get into judge death and he's definitely featured more in the more modern judge dread stuff yeah it's, it kind of reminds me of when they sample music and people think it's like, yeah. Well, and then, then the, well, Judge Dredd got them back because they ended up creating like Judge Dredd who laughs or something like that. Like they ended up creating like their own version of Batman who laughs kind of like get back at DC. But um, so they, they acknowledged the, yeah. uh, the, I'll say homage yeah. to, to give them credit, but <laughs> you're going to say it, you got to roll your mustache at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> Coming in at number two, though, we get that Marvel superheroes number 20. Well, we talked heavily the other week about Galactus and I feel like you can't talk about Galactus without talking about this guy. And of course we're talking Dr. Doom. Um, Dr. Doom is coming. We know it. Big bad. I got to think that we're going to get Dr. Doom. We're going to get Magneto. We're going to get, um, man, we're going to get Galactus. Like these, these just have to be facts. Um, and again, just like with Galactus is everybody, um, can talk about the first appearance, but that's been a book that everybody's wanted for years. That's a book that's unattainable to so many people. Um, and with that, people are always going to look for that next best thing. Now, this is not a cheap issue. 
you're looking at a $150 issue in really good shape. Of course, um, this is a book where you can get it much cheaper in lower to mid grade. It's a black cover, so you got to be careful. But I would look for some of those mid to lower grade presentable copies um, that you can get for steals of a deal. This is the very first Dr. Doom solo story um, where he could get kind of like that Dr. Doom kind of trade dress up front. I think this is a great one to be specking on going forward before Dr. Doom appears in kind of proper light in the MCU. Then hitting our spot in the number one this week, this is one of my favorite Bronze Age series, and we're talking about Jungle Action number 18 with that first Madam Slay, right? Yeah, this is an appearance that my guy Mel V has been talking about for a long time. And I've always agreed with him, but I think it's never more important now than that right now since the death of Chadwick Boseman. Um, if you're not familiar with Madam Slay, Madam Slay is the love interest of Eric Killmonger. Um, and she resurrects Eric Killmonger from the dead. And it's kind of been spe widely speculated ever since Eric Killmonger died in the very first movie, but yet sold so much merchandise. Michael B. Jordan, you could argue, was as big a part of the success of that original movie um, as Chadwick Boseman himself albeit not to put any disrespect on Chadwick's name because he did his thing in all of the subsequent yeah. Avengers. It's one where you can re relate to both the protagonist and antagonist in that movie. Yeah, yeah, and you almost wanted some reconciliation between them. Um, and I, I still really feel like that's a story we need, but it's going to have to be Shuri and Killmonger versus um, uh, T'Challa. But I, I really believe that Madam Slay, this is a massively undervalued book. Look at what... Um, the the prices of Killmonger's first appearance were at the height of the the heat for um uh this book now again we could talk Killmonger here but we've already talked about it on this list and we're not trying to go double back I'm definitely bullish on that 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 first appearance of Eric Killmonger I still think that book has second life and has taken more than like a a hundred percent drop in price so I think that's a great book, but I think this is a totally undervalued book, $15, $18, $20 in good shape. It's a book you can regularly find that dealers won't even realize is a key first appearance and will just be in back issue bins with jungle action books. So four, five, six, seven dollars $7. Um, this is one I would start hoarding and grabbing up. Uh, you, no, no concrete movie news. Um, I think Tiana Taylor tweeted at one point that she would love to play Madam Slay, and there was a lot of support for that on Twitter. But other than that, there's no concrete movie news, just a belief that if they're going to keep this Black Panther franchise going, um, I definitely think Shuri is going to be at the forefront of that. Um, but to help out Duo Lapita and kind of not make her carry the, the weight of a franchise, to have Michael B. Jordan there um, – playing a major part would definitely aid in that effort. Um, and this could definitely be the conduit to do that. So there it is, guys. There's another 10 issues to add to your hunt list. That's what's on our hunt list. You guys can add to yours. In fact, what do you have on your hunt list? Let us know in the comments. What are some books that a lot of people overlook that you guys always have on your hunt list when you're out there at the LCS or the swap meets or wherever that might be open during the time of COVID? But we're always interested to hear what books people are picking up. That's what makes the comic community great, right? Oh, absolutely. Definitely let us know what you guys are looking for, um, what books you're hunting. And like he said in the comment section, and you never know, we may pull one of your comments and put it on the list. With that being said, this is Brian Jack with Superman's Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video. Yeah, these championship rings on my hands now. My head on top 10, yeah, this hands down. Yeah, down. Yeah. Squad, squad, now you're looking man down. Funny high foes, turn to friends now. Drive a race car like a target. I'm caught filling up, I need product.